and the Titans are the AFC South champions. Watson, under pressure, fires downfield. Pass intercepted. Right here, right now, up for grabs. Built here, built up, built to last. Only addition I can never subtract. Finger roll! Henry charging forward. 52 yards for the King! I refuse to lose. I got something to prove. I'm gonna make my move. Then I show off. He throws deep downfield. Going for A.J. Brown. He's got it! So A.J. Brown the makes the catch. Slovens kick is up. His kick hits the upright. And goes through. Yes! In the 2020 AFC South champions reside in the 6-1-5. Tighten up. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and the Mike Vrabel show presented by Coca-Cola. I'm Mike Keith. We are in the playoffs now. And when we jump into playoff time, we get a pinch hitter and a pinch hitter deluxe at that. General Manager John Robinson sits in for Mike Vrabel. Thank you for doing this. And congratulations to you on being the 2020 AFC South champions. Thanks, Mike. Really, really proud of the football team and, uh, I certainly do not mind pinch hitting this time of the year for coach uh, so he can prepare for, for our playoff opponent. It gives me um, great joy to sit in for him. That means uh, we're still playing football in January. That means we're all busy, no doubt. Back up for just a second. It's been 48 hours. What was that locker room like as you handed out the hats and the T-shirts and, and had the moment of celebration after what was such an emotional win? Well, I continue to encourage mask wearing, Mike, with the COVID protocols. It was a ton of excitement. You know, there's a lot of hard work that's that's gone into this season that goes into every season. A lot of guys that have stepped up, you know, who've been backups before and, and, and kind of gotten elevated into, you know, to starting roles and, and guys that we've counted on and, and our, you know, premium players and guys that have been starters here for a long time. Just that, that feeling of team and excitement for for winning our division was, was uh, it was really, really, really cool to see. Titans won it with a 41 to 38 victory at Houston. Let's take a look at some of the big plays. And one of the early ones came from the defense, John, and second year safety, Amani Hooker. You know, we, we kind of had a simulated pressure here um, and we played man coverage uh, behind it. And, you know, you could see David Long getting a little pressure there. And Hooker did a great job of kind of spying out of there and, and reading uh, Watson's eyes, anticipating the throw. Uh, getting himself in position, uh, breaking on it, and getting, a, and getting a huge turnover for us there early on in the game. Hooker finishes the season tied with Malcolm Butler for the team lead with four interceptions. Game tied at three as we go to the second quarter. First play of the second quarter, how about King Henry to the house? Yeah, you know, just, you know, we've seen this, we've seen him do this uh, uh, many times. It's, it's an inside zone play where, where we're able to get a hat on a hat up front with, with the lineman. Swain really did a really good job on the right side there with Dennis Kelly to push up there and get the linebacker knocked out of there. Great vision by Derek. You can see AJ flash in there and, and kind of shield off one of the safeties. And then once he gets into open field, uh, we've all seen it before. He's a tough man to catch uh, once he turns the Jets on. Later in the second quarter, John Robinson mentioning A.J. Brown. He has a touchdown, a four-yard reception from Ryan Tannehill. Yeah, you know, this play, we had, we had kind of a look over there to the right. You can see Pruitt's open in the flat, and, it, it, you know, they, they kind of put a linebacker over there that dirtied up the picture a little bit for Ryan, but the protection held up. Uh, Ryan did a great job of sliding uh, to his right. A.J. did a good job of kind of setting his route down and then accelerating across, finding an open zone. And then Ryan with great vision, you know, in a you know, shortened field there down there on the five to slide, get in position, spot A.J. Uh, and deliver the football to him for a touchdown. Third quarter, the Titans get help from other receivers on a touchdown drive, a couple of big third down conversions. Ryan Tannehill goes to one of his favorite third down targets, Anthony Ferkser. 
It's really a three-step pass here where, you know, Ryan, as soon as his back foot um, on that third step hits, he's letting it rip. Uh, Ferkshire does a great job of knowing where the sticks are. They're playing a sticks uh, coverage, if you will. You can see three defenders closing quickly. Ferkshire does a great job of, of finding the hole in the zone there. Um, he anticipates the throw. Ryan snaps it off, and it was a huge uh, conversion for us. Later in the third quarter, let's go back to Derrick Henry. This run covering 45 yards. Yeah, more of an outside zone play here. Really gets downhill. Great uh, kick out block there by Swaim, as you can see. And we always tell Derek on some of these runs, you, you've got to account for one guy. You know, you're going to have to throw that stiff arm, uh, which you can see. He throws it twice. The guy kind of leaks off of Dennis Scarlett there. He knocks him off. And then there's the guy he's got to account for, the safety. He stiff arms him and, and rumbles down, throws another elbow to knock, to knock that guy off and almost gets in. The Texans scored 20 straight points in the ball game to take a 35-31 lead with 10-14 to go. The Titans go on a 19-play, 75-yard drive that culminates with Mr. Tannehill taking it in. Yeah, they were really keying on Derek down there. Um, it's kind of a zone read play. It was a zone read keeper. Uh, you can see, I think they have six or seven guys committed to the middle of the of the formation there. He reads it and um, does just enough to keep Lonnie Johnson, 32 there for, for Houston, kind of frozen and giving him enough space to bounce it out to the outside and go in for the touchdown. And then the game winner, last play of the game tied at 38, the rookie from Miami of Ohio, Sam Sloman from 37. Yeah, the, the, the bank shot heard, heard round the world here. You know, I don't this isn't how we practice it during the week, but it was a great snap. Uh, it was a great hold. He he hit one right before that when, when Coach Cornell called a timeout, went right down the middle, and he, he was trying to overcompensate for, for whatever reason. He got in his head a little bit, but God bless him. He, he, he kind of steadied himself. The protection was good, and um, he banged it off that right upright, and it went through. Sam Sloman was a guy you had your eye on even pre-COVID last March at Miami of Ohio, right? Yeah, he was a guy that we'd spent some time with in the pre-draft process, you know, trying to get to know him, studied him, you know, had a good career there at Miami of Ohio. And, you know, he ended up out in, in L.A. with the Rams. And, you know, that situation didn't work out for him. And you know, we, we talked all week about second chances. And, and Sloman was a guy that got a second chance here with us, and got called up because of Steven's situation and went out and won the game for us. Titans doing their homework. And Sam Sloman comes through in the clutch, helping the team to the AFC South championship with that game-winning field goal. We'll hear from him later with Amy Wells in our Rackley Roofing Tough Titan. But coming up, our Bridgestone Clutch Performance Play of the Game. Let's go deep with Arthur Wan. That's next. From the Bet MGM studio, John Robinson in for Mike Vrabel on the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola. Time now for the Bridgestone Clutch Performance Play of the Game. 18 seconds remaining. Are we going to take a knee and go to overtime, or are we going to take a shot? We're taking a shot, John. Yeah, I mean, it's it's 18 ticks left. Uh, we, we had some timeouts there, and uh, they were playing coverage. I talked to Arthur about it after uh, the game, and, you know, he had a feeling they were going to play a certain coverage, and, you know, we, we thought if the protection held up long enough, Ryan could, could get back, set up, and, and launch it, which the protection did hold up. He steps up in the pocket. You know, the middle of the field's open, and he kind of throws it to a spot, and A.J. hits the, hits the Jets and throws his hands up and hauls in a huge, huge game-changing play for us there and gave us enough time at the end to run one more play and then kick the field goal. That's a great throw, John. Yeah, it wasn't bad, Mike. I didn't hate it. It was a trust throw uh, for Ryan. It was an accurate throw. And you could see A.J., you know, I saw it live. He, he kind of he, he, he knew the ball was coming, and he kind of hit another gear there and went to track it down. Isn't that one of the most special things about A.J., the fact that in those big situations, he wants the ball badly? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the competitor that, that he is. You know, he believes in his ability to, to go make a play, and, and he's made a lot for us. You know, he's, he's strong with the ball in his hands. Um, he can break tackles, and as we just saw with that play, he's got speed to stretch the field and hit the home run. Set it up for the field goal that won the ball game on Sunday in Houston. Time now for Delta Dentals. Can you guess this Titan? Mike Vrabel has been on a roll. How will John Robinson do? I don't think you've ever missed one when you've been filling in. Yeah, I don't know. It's always tough. It could be a challenge on this one. You're going to have a break, so just take a long look. When we come back, we'll have the answer to the Delta Dental Can You Guess This Titan and Sam Sloman. Who is he? You'll learn more 
in the Rackley Roofing Tough Tight on the Mike Vrabel Show. Can John Robinson guess this Titan? There's pressure. Brought to you by Delta Dental on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Coca-Cola from the Bet MGM studio. John Robinson, I've bought you time. Do you know? You know what? I, I think I think I've got it, Mike. I, I'm I feel pretty good about it. I'm gonna go Michael Pruitt. Ooh, Michael Pruitt. It's Harold Landry. Hmm. Yeah. Swing and a miss. Swing and a wah, miss. Wah, wah. Harold Landry season. This guy played a ton of football for you on defense. Almost never came off the field. I mean, he really had a good game, you know, Mike, whether it was um, dropping out into coverage, you know, banging some of those inside routes, rerouting guys, coming in on stunts, um, setting the edge in the run game, you know, had a couple pressures uh, for us out of sack, um, you know, just continues to play a high percentage of plays for us and, and, and be productive. Harold Landry going to be one of the key players for the Titans going into the playoffs. One of the key players from Sunday, of course, was the man who hit the game winner, Sam Sloman. He is this week's Rackley Roofing Tough Titan. And standing by with number two is Amy Wells. Sam, just for starters, I think we just have to say, wow. You started the week on the practice squad. Then you're getting ready for one of the biggest games of your career, of anybody's career, really, and a colossal moment. How do you get your mind right for something like that? Well, you know, I was just, I was really thankful just for the opportunity, the chance to, you know, it's a second chance. And uh, yeah, I've been working on things on the practice squad, working on my form, working on getting better. And, uh, you know, I just, they tell me yeah, I'm going to go to practice and you know, just prepare like it's any other game. It was kind of a crazy week, but I was able to settle down and you know, prepare pretty well. Leading up to this week, your practice squad experience was a little bit different than what we're used to, what the norm is. Talk a little bit about what your routine has been like. Me and Trevor and Matt, the practice squad, Hunter and Snapper, we, you know, three of us, we virtually meet. We go on uh, Zoom meetings for special teams in our team meeting. And while the offense and defense for our meetings, the three of us would come in and we'd work. So we've actually gotten a pretty good operation. The three of us have. We've been working uh, really hard, really well together. It's been pretty cool to get to know those guys really well. and. You know, they're great guys, so it was a little different, but uh, I was having a good time with it for sure. As a kicker, there's always going to be a moment when the game is on the line and you have to perform. What do you do to stay calm and stay ready for moments like that? I really treat it like every kick is the same. I, you know, I haven't had a kick at the last play of the game uh, in a situation like this, but I've had tons of kicks in every kind of situation. Brett and Matt have done a great job just keeping everything routine for me. After that kick went through, there was a huge moment of celebration, and you don't really know a lot of the people on this team. You just haven't spent a lot of time with them. Was that strange at all? Not really. They've done a great job all week uh, getting to know me, and it, you know they've been really excited for me for every opportunity, and it was really cool before the game just talking to guys, and during the game, everybody, they were excited for me for the opportunity. And it was just awesome after the game. You know, it felt like I'd been here for a long time. So it was a really, really, really cool feeling. All right, now we've got to wrap this thing up. But I've got to ask, I know in college you wore the number 79, which is not a traditional kicker number. Tell me a little bit about that. Honestly, it was just a number I was given when I got to college. I didn't really like it at first, but I ended up loving it. And I still think it's a really cool and unique number for a kicker. Sam Sloman, thank you for being our Rackley Roofing Tough Titan. We're going to take a break, but when we come back, we're going to talk about not just being strong, but being Nashville strong, being 615 strong. Butch Spearden's here to talk with Mike Keith about how you can help those affected by the recent tragedy in Nashville. Stick around. He needs two yards to keep this game moving on. You see what you're made of when you go through something tough. Steady rainfall. And yeah, it's been a tough year, but Tennesseans are built for this. Grit passed down through generations. We look for it. We like it that way. Wow. How did he do it? Touchdown! Tough. Tennessee tough. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio and the Mike Vrabel show presented by Coca-Cola. 
This weekend, Nashville will be one of six cities to host NFL playoff games. And that makes the president and CEO of the Nashville Convention and Visitors Corp very proud. Butch Spirited joins us on the Mike Vrabel Show. It is a special time, one that you envisioned when you helped fight for pro football back in the 90s, that this city takes center stage as part of Wild Card Weekend. In spite of everything we've been through in the last year, couldn't be happier to kick off 2021 with a home playoff game. So congrats, thanks, uh, let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving indeed. And something else I know that you have been very proud of is the way our community has stepped forward in the wake of the Christmas morning bombing. It has been inspirational to see the way that people have pulled together on behalf of Nashville. Inspirational is, is the exact right word. It makes you proud to live here. It makes you proud to be involved in the community. First responders, police in particular, unbelievable job. And uh, community rallying around the, uh, the victims. So uh, Nashville's a pretty special place and uh, proud to live here. Butch, so many people have asked the question and I know they've asked it to you. I wanna ask it here on the Mike Vrabel Show. What's the best way people can help the residents, the businesses, the people affected by the Christmas morning bomb? So there are, that I know of, three opportunities to provide assistance. The United Way has started a fund Community Foundation has a fund, and then our charitable foundation, Music City Inc., has set up a, uh, a fund. And we have always found that trying to get immediate assistance into the victim's hands is the, it's the hardest thing to do. So we try to cut away the red tape, and we've already reached out to probably 100 uh, individuals that have lost their jobs, and we will provide Visa gift cards, if you will, put cash directly in to their hands as soon as possible. I would expect that we will do a good chunk, hopefully 50 to $100,000 this week that we will uh, we'll give out. And this is gonna take a while to make all this right, not just with the buildings and with Second Avenue, but for these people. If people have the opportunity now, they think, oh, they, they've already got enough. No, they need to keep giving and they need to stay involved, don't they? Well said, you know, when you realize Dozens of people lost everything they own in terms of their residence and their belongings. And then there's another group of people that have lost their employment. And it was already, you know, tough sledding for wait staff, for example. So I talked to Spaghetti Factory. They have 35 employees who are instantly out of work. And that's just a small example. We estimate there's probably a thousand people that make their living on Second Avenue. So we got to try to find all of them then find the residents and literally lift them up. So this is going to go on for a while. And yeah, we could use the help. Titans have been great. Let me say a shout out to Will Compton. He texted me, I think probably Saturday and said, how can we help? And then he put the word out and Burke Nihil reached out, said, how can we help? So Titans have already been a great partner and you guys do so much for the community already. I can't say thank you enough. Butch Spirit and President and CEO of the Nashville Convention and Visitors Corp. Thanks for your time. Appreciate you being with us on the Mike Vrabel Show. Remind everybody, if you want to donate, go to TennesseeTitans.com slash 615strong and chip in for our community. Let's be 615strong together. When we come back, the keys to winning a playoff game against Baltimore on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Coca-Cola. Nissan keys to success right now against Baltimore on Sunday. John Robinson sitting in for Mike Vrabel. Let's start with the first one. Sustain drives and finish with touchdowns, John. Yeah, Mike, we talk about it all the time offensively is, is getting into that first drive, getting into the drive, get the first first down, stay on track, and then get down to the red zone and, and finish with touchdowns, and that'll be key for Sunday. Effect and tackle the Ravens playmakers. They've got a bunch of them, John. Yeah, they, they do. I mean, they're, lead, they're leading the league in, in rushing. they got a bunch of guys that can run the football. they got fast guys that, that run and catch. We'll have to affect these guys, not let them make yards, and, and tackle them when we get a chance. And your final key is keep the win-one game mentality. What does that mean to you, John? 
you know, now that we're in the tournament, it's a single elimination tournament. So if, if, if you want to keep playing, you got to keep winning. And uh, if we if we attack um, this game uh, against the Ravens, focus solely on that. Don't worry about your next opponent, where it may be, who it may be. Uh, focus solely on the Ravens, put all our efforts into that and, and go out and, and play our style. Then then you, you can continue to build and, and keep winning. John, thanks for sitting in for Mike Vrabel. I hope we're doing it again next week. I'm looking forward to it, Mike. All right. Kickoff Sunday at 12.05 at Nissan Stadium. Titans Radio hits the air on 104.5 The Zone at 11. We hope you'll join us. Thanks for being with us. Tighten up. Tighten up.